let's, really? let's just let's just kind of I want to kind of work through this whole thing right from the whole, beginning. Yeah, I see the whole thing. So this whole this whole concept of potential energy, <laughs> we're not going to obviously have a test just on chapter twenty one. This is going to get rolled into. So all I'm all I want you to see is like the big picture on this. Case. So here's when you look, and that's going to kind of go through this. So when you look at even question number one. Oh, you had a 10 nanocoulomb charge from point A to point B. You determined the electrical potential was 150. What would be the potential at B if a 20 nanocoulomb charge is moved from point A to point B? So here's the story. So here you are, A to B, right? So when you look at, and this is where you have to pay attention to the terminology, it says, what would be the potential, okay? So first off, if you're going to move across a voltage, let's say you're at 100 volts and you end up at 150 volts, okay? What makes this complicated is, number one, you have to keep track of which direction that you're moving. So in this case, you would be moving, I, this is this, this random example, okay? You're moving from 100 volts to 150 volts. So part of this is that any time you have a change in voltage, okay, listen to me. A change in voltage, not voltage, but a change in voltage, okay? That's going to re require some type of work being done, okay? Some force has to be exerted over a distance because you're moving across a gradient. So when you look at this, because it, it's asking what would be the potential at point B of 20 min, okay? okay? So on number one, it's still going to be the exact same, mainly because it's independent of the charge. You're going from 100 to 150. So if it's all if all it's asking about is just the change, that doesn't make any difference. Now, is it going to be harder to move like that 20 nanocoulomb charge? Is that going to take more work? Yes. Okay. But it's just like if I have like this little thing and I take hank the bowling ball and lift it up. Okay. They would both have the same change in height. That's regardless of mass. Is it going to take more work to lift up Hank? Yes. Okay. But in terms of just the change in height. So that's how you want to view this first question. Because it asks, it doesn't ask about the work. Okay. All it's asking about is the change. So since it's still going to be that same change from, and all you know is that it's a difference of 150. So actually, that would be 1 to like 200, okay? It really doesn't make any difference. Here's the main idea, is that all, if all it's asking about is the change, it doesn't make any difference. The amount of charge influences the next, the next part. Now, when you get to question number two, so here's your setup. So you've got a gap. This side's positively charged. And this side is negative charge. And so when you look at this one, okay, so you have some charge Q, it is going to be pushed through there. So if it's a positive charge, and this is where you have to look at number one, what's the direction of the electric field? And then also, what's the charge on the particle? So if this thing has a positive charge, right, and it's shot through there, as it clears this gap, what's it going to do? It's either going to speed up or slow down. Morella, what's it going to do? Speed up. Why? Because um, opposite charges and the radius is getting smaller. Okay, well let's just start with the charge thing. Okay, right? well it's attracted to the negative. Thing. You have two things going. Okay, um, yeah. that positive charge is going to be repulsed by that positive plate and it's going to be attracted to the negative plate, right? So here's the story. Is there going to be, and this is just a, a generic change, okay? Is there going to be either a change in potential energy or a change in kinetic energy as this thing goes across? Kinetic. Both, right? Because as it goes across, what's it going to happen to the kinetic energy? It's going to go up, right? 
So what's going to happen to your potential energy? It's, it's, it's going to decrease, right? So it's, it, that's somewhat like me taking this ball and dropping it. So I'm losing potential energy and I'm gaining kinetic. kinetic. So as that thing goes across, so on that first question, what's going to happen? Oh, it's going to speed up. And then using the concept of force, using the concept of energy. So that one, this is one of the most important things. So in terms of force, it's going to be repulsed by the positive. It's going to be attracted by the negative. So there's going to be a force that's going to move it across. From an energy perspective, you're losing potential and you're gaining kinetic. Now, when you get to B, if it had been a negative charge, okay? Now, if it had been a negative charge, here's the whole deal. As that gets pushed across, that would be like me throwing this ball up in the air. So as it goes across, it's just going to be the opposite. You're going to store potential energy, but you're going to lose kinetic. kinetic. Okay? Does that make sense? That's why you said, well, what happens when a charged particle goes across plates? <coughs> well, it depends. Wait, so it's gaining when it was the positive? If, it, if it's a negative charge... Okay, and you shoot that across, then it's going to be attracted back towards the positive. It's going to re be repulsed by the negative, so it's going to feel an attractive charge back to here and a negative charge back to here. So it's going to be pulled back and then repulsed. So it's going to slow down as it goes across. So if it's a negative charge, you're going to lose kinetic energy but then you're going to store potential energy. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Good. Got it. Okay. Now, when you get to question number four, and this, this is a bigger idea, okay? Even getting ready for the final. So number four... Wait, final final or midterm? Midterm, midterm final. final. Okay. Okay, so here's this positive nucleus, and you have an electron. Now, this is the simplified, like, Bohr model, where they assume the electrons are moving in these perfectly little circular paths. And you can model it that way. In reality, we don't know what they're doing. They're actually moving as a wave function, but it makes the math easy. So, on A, you've got how much work is done on the electron as it moves from here you are at I over here to... F. Okay? Now, let's think bigger picture. This is a perfectly circular path. Okay? Private and perfectly circular path. Is the electron accelerating as it goes from I to F? Yes. Why, Bob? Centripetal force. That's true. I forgot how to explain it. Because okay. it's, it's moving. Because there's a force pushing it inwards to keep it from going. Hold on. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Does the electron want to move in a circular path? No. No, no because of? Inertia. Inertia. Newton's first law of motion. Okay? Because if there wasn't a force acting on the, on the electron, what would it do? Go straight. It would go off in a straight line. Okay, oh so God. by virtue of the fact that it's traveling in a circular path, there has to be a force acting on it. And keep this in mind, because this is going to be important when we get into electric and magnetic fields. Okay, so, Pop, what's the direction of the force? Inward. At a right angle to the? The tangent one. To the velocity vector, right? Okay. So that force is acting inward at a right angle to the instantaneous velocity vector, okay? Any centripetal force acts inward, okay? It's never pushing outward. There's no force pushing this thing out. Now, as inertia, it wants to move in a straight line, okay? So there's two criteria that has to be done for work, <coughs> the generic way of looking at work. There's two things that have to be done. You have to have a force 
and there has to be a displacement in the direction of the force, okay? So as this thing is moving around in a perfectly circular orbit, is there a force being exerted? Yeah. yeah. But is there work being done? No. No, because there's no displacement in the direction of work or of the force. So that's one way to look at it. The other way, generically, to look at work is that it's a change in some type of energy. Change in potential energy, change in kinetic energy, something like that. So as that electron is moving around, and this is the, the importance of scalar quantities, okay? So if you look at the kinetic energy of that electron as it moves around, and you look at one half mv squared, right? So if it's traveling in a perfectly circular orbit, is the velocity changing? No. So is the kinetic energy changing? No. So if there's no change in the kinetic energy, there's, that means there's no work being done because of the fact that that velocity is remaining constant. So the direction that it's moving doesn't matter because kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. It doesn't matter. It's just going to keep traveling in a circular path. So on that first answer on 4A, no work is done. Okay? Because nothing is changing. There's a force, there's no movement in that displacement, there's no change in the kinetic energy, there's no change in the potential energy, nothing is changing. Okay? Now, when you get to B, how much does the electrical potential energy change the electron moves from I to F? Now, it's the same idea. So if we're not doing any work, guess what? We're not changing the energy, because you have to do work to change the energy. So your answer to B is, hey, there's no change in the energy because of the fact that there's no work being done. Then you get to C by how much, the, or if the electron speed is F greater than or less than or equal to its speed at I. Well, it's just going to be the same because of the fact that there's no change in the energy because there's no work being done. So this just kind, kind of starts this domino, okay? And then are your answers yes, because of the fact that if you're not do, changing anything, there's no work being done, your velocity isn't changing, your kinetic energy isn't changing, your potential energy isn't changing. Now, in contrast to that, you have question number five, okay? So in number four, you have this thing moving in this nice circular orbit. It's easy peasy. It's still accelerating, but it's just not changing the energy. Now, when you get to number five, okay, so here's this positively charged nucleus, and here's this electron. Okay, that's not bad. Years of being bored in physics lectures. Okay, so it's an electron, okay? So look, let's look at it this way. As it's moving away, because it's an electron, start with this idea. Is the electron feeling a repulsive or attractive force attractive, to... Attractive. attractive. Right? So it wants to go that way. The closer it is, what happens to the value of that attractive force? Greater. It's greater. So this is when it's going to have its greatest attractive force. It kind of acts like gravity. Okay? This, you model this is almost like an elliptical orbit with a planet. Okay? So you know when the planet is closest, it has its highest velocity, smallest potential energy. As the planet goes out in that elliptical orbit, you, you transpose kinetic energy for potential energy. The same thing is going to happen with this electron. Okay? So on this one, does electrical potential energy increase, decrease, or stay the same? So if you look at this, as this is getting farther away, first off, it's attracted to it. So as this thing goes away, but it's attracted to it, it's like me throwing this ball up in the air. So that thing is attracted to the Earth. So as it goes away, what happens to its velocity? Decreases. It decreases. What happens to the potential energy? It increases. It increases. So on that one, so your potential energy is going to increase because of the fact that you are losing velocity and you're losing kinetic energy. So it's like stretching out a rubber band, okay? 
So then is the speed at f greater than or less than or equal to, okay? It's less than, and it's the same idea because, and now you're doing the work because now you're changing energy from one form to another. So that's that kind of summary contrast between question four and five. So if it's a perfectly circular orbit, nothing is changing. There's forces, it's accelerating, nothing is changing. Pop. Wait, so in terms of the, like the, the potential energy equation for electricity, mm -hmm. so since you're dividing by a bigger radius, but it would be negative, so it would just be a more closer yes. to zero, right? So that's yes. how you know. That's the easiest way to think of it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because <laughs> that potential <laughs> energy plus your kinetic energy always have to add up to a constant. So, so if you're getting less negative, then you get less. less. Exactly. So even, okay. even if you don't change the constant, you can still do work? Yeah, because you're transposing. It's just like if I throw this up in the air, I have a certain amount of kinetic okay, energy that I give it. Call mm -hmm. it four joules. Mm -hmm. When I get up there to the top, that four joules of kinetic energy is going to exist as four joules of potential energy. Oh, yes. And that value, they'll still add up to the same number. Okay? Got that. Okay. Now, how did I just manage to lose my pen? Okay. So cool, cool with the questions. Okay. Now let's talk about the problems. So our problem number one. So you're at 300 volts. What's another way to express volts? Uh, joules, joules per, per coulomb. Joules per coulomb. Okay, it's energy per amount of energy, right? So point B, where it's 150. Now let's look at a scenario. Let's look at a scenario. So if you go with that mountain analogy that we started with yesterday, and here's that positive charge at the top of the mountain, okay? So these lines of equal voltage as you go down, as you go down are the lines, let's say for example, this is, let's say this is 300 volts, okay? So as you go down, are those voltage lines going to get bigger or smaller? Smaller. Smaller. smaller? smaller, because it's an inverse relationship to R. So that might be 200, that might be 100 volts, right? Now, here's where you have to think through this thing. So if you have a positive charge that you're going to push up in this direction, okay? Would you have to push it in that direction, or would you have to keep it from going in that direction push by it, pushing it. in the opposite push direction? Push it. Push it. You've got to push it up. So if it's a positive charge, and so if it's a positive charge, and you're going from a low voltage up to a higher voltage, okay? Voltage. then you've got to push that thing up and you're going to do work. So as it goes in that direction, it's going to get closer, right? What's going to happen to the kinetic energy? Decrease. Decrease, right? Because it doesn't want to go in that direction. So as this thing goes in that direction, you are going to lose velocity. You're going to lose kinetic energy, but you're going to gain, gain Potential. Okay? Now, if it's an electron that's on the other side, okay? And as an electron goes in that direction, then what's going to happen? You got to pull it back. Okay? You got to hold it back. Step back, Jack. So, as it goes, but if you just let go of it, what would happen to the amount of kinetic energy? Gonna go up. Go up. We would gain kinetic energy. And you would lose potential energy. We would lose potential energy. Yeah. Okay. So this is why this is why it's so important 
that you look at what's the point source, okay? What's creating the voltages? Is it a positive point source? Is it a negative point source? Is it a positive charge? Is it a negative charge? So in terms of just gravity, it's simple. Oh, it goes up, it comes back down. Bingo, all right? Don't have to worry about it. Oh, it goes up, you lose velocity. Now, it's just like we throw it up in the air. Well, we throw it up in the air, there's potential for that velocity to increase when we throw it up in the air, which would get really, really weird, okay? But Wait, so for the negative one, the voltage would go up the opposite way, right? Like as you pull it away? What do you mean? By, like, what do you mean? Clar clarify like, by going up. Like on the, the mountain, yeah. the mountain model, like instead of it going like as you go up it, you'd be gaining voltage because you wouldn't be you'd be doing work. It'd be like as you go down it. Are you are you talking about if you swap out what's on top of the mountain, whether it's a positive no, or negative charge? No, you keep charge? positive and have a negative. If you sell a positive, if as long as there's a positive, the voltages themselves are still going to be positive. They are. Yes. Even if the. Because that's like the test charge that's existing in the field. I thought, I thought it was negative voltage. No, 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 no. You look at what's creating the voltage lines on the mountain. Uh -huh. Okay? So if I've got a positive charge, yeah. whether I put a negative test charge in it or a positive test charge in it, it doesn't make any difference about what's going to happen to those voltages. As long as what's creating the voltage is positive, no matter what you put in it, your voltage lines are always going to be positive. So it has to be like okay. a top with an electron for the voltages to be negative. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, but would the but it'd be increasing like from 100, 200, 300 as you go away from it, right? Instead. No, it would go. Don't yeah, don't don't kind of. don't. You're you're making this way too complicated. Okay. If that electron goes from 100 to 300, okay. Yeah. Then it's going to be speeding up. So don't 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 wrap kinetic and potential energy into changes in voltages. Okay. Okay. So whether it's a proton or an electron, if it goes from 100 to 300, it's still going to be 300 minus 100. It's still going to be final minus initial. Okay. Okay. That's not going to change. What happens is because work equals Q delta V. That's where the charge comes into it, whether that's a positive or negative value. Okay. That's that's where you that's where you roll that into it. The voltages themselves are based upon the charge on top of the mountain. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the one that's staying in place. Yes, the that's the one that's staying in place. That that test charge that's existing on the mountain doesn't influence the voltage lines on the mountain. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So here's the story. So if I'm going to go from a positive, let's say 100 up to 300, let's say it's, it's a proton, okay, or a positive charge, whatever that is, okay? So if I start at 100 volts, 100 volts, and I go to 300 volts, then my delta V is going to be my final, which is 300, minus 100, which is going to get me 200 volts. Okay? Now, if you look at work equaling Q delta V. So, and I'm not worried about the numbers. So, in this situation, I'm going to take a positive charge times a positive delta V, and I'm going to get positive work. Okay? because of the fact that I'm pushing this thing up the hill. So if it's a positive, a positive, there you go. Now, here's the story. So if it's a positive charge and you're going up and you're increasing the voltage, that's going to be positive work. Now, I can have positive work with a negative charge, but I'd have to lower it, okay? And here's the reason why. So if the, now if we look at it from being a negative test charge, okay? And you look at work equaling, so now I'm gonna have a negative charge times a delta V. So the only way I can have positive work 
with negative charges if I have a negative delta V, which means in this situation I'd have like 100 minus 300 volts. That would then also produce a positive work. So there's two ways you can get positive work. You can push a positive test charge from low voltage to high, or you can take a negative charge associated with a positive voltage and push it down. So that would, hopefully that makes sense. So, okay, I'm pushing it that way because it doesn't want to go that way if I'm on the positive side of the mountain with a positive charge. Cool with this. Everybody, that, that is the problem. The negative side is where it gets tricky, okay? Because look at it this way. If I've got an electron on this side, okay, it wants to go up the mountain. Does. So if I push it down the mountain, it doesn't want to go in that direction, right? Because it wants to go in that way. So to get positive work, I either push a positive charge up the mountain in the opposition that it wants to go, or I push a negative charge down the mountain. Down the mountain. Oh. Okay? Makes sense. Yeah. So it works out mathematically. Hopefully that also works out conceptually. So with all of that, with all that background set, okay? So when you look at that first question, moving a charge from point A to point B, the potential is 300 volts to point B where the potential is 150. So I'm going from positive 300, and I'm moving it down to 150, okay? So I'm going from the high point down to a low point, okay? So here's the first thing that you need to decide. What's going to be the sign of my delta V? Negative. Negative, right? I'm going to have a negative delta V. In this case, that's going to be negative 150. So on problem number one, and this is why you have to think this through step by step by step. So my delta V is going to be negative 150 volts. Okay? Cool with this. Yes. Now, the importance of this thing is that it says on this one, it takes 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth joules. So I've got 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth joules. Okay? So that's my work value. So my work is a positive value. Work is a positive value. So is this charge that I'm moving going to have a positive or negative charge, <coughs> negative sign to it? Ah, it's going to have a negative charge because that's the way. I, that's the only way I can end up with a positive work. Positive work. So what's happening is that if you go back to the mountain analogy. I'm here, and I've got to push it down the hill. So there's, again, there's two ways you can do positive work. Positive charge going from low to high, negative charge going from high to low. And since I'm going from high to low, and I have positive work, therefore my charge has to be a negative value. Okay? That makes sense. So the Q delta V, the Q is the one that's... The yes, the that's the test charge that's moving, yeah. that you're doing work on. Okay. okay. That isn't what's on top of the mountain. Yeah. That's what's moving across the voltages. Okay. Okay? Got that. Yep. So then, that's why both of those answers, or your answer on number one, has to be a negative value, because that's the only way you can end up being, ending up with positive work. Okay. Now, if it had gone from 100 to 300, and they had told you that the work was negative, then what would happen? You still get the same answer, but then you would have a positive, positive charge. charge. Okay? Yes, sir. Starting to see the big picture. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when you get to question number two, there's a couple of different ways you can look at number two. So let's look at the big picture first. So here you have radius, and here you have ooey, right? Ooey. And you got a graph that's going to look like this. So let's look at this, okay? Let's just say I just give you the graph. Leave everything else out. Leave everything else out. 
All right. As the radius gets smaller, what happens to your value of buoy? It increases. It increases and it is exponential. Negative and it's exponential. Okay, or at least it's an inverse, right? But most importantly, it's going to be negative value, right? Yes, sir. So, what's a situation where as you decrease the rate, as two points become closer together, you can increase the potential energy? Would they have to be the same sign or opposite sign? Same sign. Same, same sign, right? Yeah. So, this could be positives, negatives, something's got to happen, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to increase that energy because as the, you're shrinking the radius, it's like you're compressing a spring. So on this one, because it really doesn't matter which point you pick. So on this one, you look at Ue, right? So U is going to equal KQ1, Q2 over R. No, 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 it's not over R squared. That's force. Okay, it's just over R. So on this one, You've got, if one charge is positive 0.44 nanocoulombs. Mm -hmm. So you're going to know one of the charges, right? So here's what you're going to have to do. So if you look at this in terms of that U value, what I did, I just went through and I picked, I think, one centimeter, because that, that matched up. So I had one centimeter, okay? And then I came down here and I found the ooey that matched up with that value, okay? And then I, you just have to pick a coordinate pair. So then you're going to know your value of U, you know your value of Q, you know the value of radius, you know what K is, solve for the second one. Okay, it really doesn't make it, I just, I picked that point because it lined up on the graph and I could get a pretty good idea of what those points are. So anyway, so on number two, in nanocoulombs, it should be around negative 10. So, got that one. Now, when you get to number three, so this is a bigger picture on number three. <sighs> so, you got a 20 nanocoulomb charge. So, positive, so you got a positive charge, right? And you're going to have a point where it's at 150, and then you're going to move that to negative 50. Okay? No, no, no. Which one are you doing, number three? My bad. Yeah. That, I would click number four. Hold on. Back up. I completely wrote down the wrong numbers. So number three, you got a 15 nanocoulomb charge. And the work done is on it is three microjoules. This is an odd measurement. Okay? And then you want to look at the voltage from C to A. Okay? So here's the story. So you got a 15 nanocoulomb charge. So because of the fact that when you look at it takes three microjoules from point A to point B. So here's point A, here's the point B. Okay? You have a positive charge and you're gonna do positive work. So what do you know about the voltages? Are you moving it to a higher voltage or are you moving it to a lower voltage? You're moving it to a higher voltage, no, lower voltage. Hold on. Hold on. Higher voltage. Lower. Middle. No, 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 because it increases. Higher, higher voltage. Higher. Sorry, it's higher. a higher voltage. Higher voltage? I got, my, I got my voltages mixed up. It's a higher voltage. Higher voltage, right? 100%. Yes, yeah. 100%. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, it should say you're dead wrong. 100%. 110%. Okay. 120 So here's the point. If you look on this one, yeah. could you calculate the delta V? Could yeah. you? Yeah, you yeah. could. I did. Yeah. yeah. Because you know work equals Q delta V, right? You know the work, true? You know the charge, you can find that delta V. And if you do that, you get, I think 200? 
200 volts. Now, here's the deal. This could be 1,000 to 2,000. It could be zero to 200. It could be 200 or 300 to 500, okay? You don't know what the voltages are. You just know the changes in the voltage, okay? It'd be like, hey, Pop walks in, he goes, Burke, I said, Pop, how's it going? He goes, man, it's cool. Burke Hamp was walking to class, found a $20 bill laying on the ground. Cool, okay? Now, I don't know how much money is in Pop's bank account. He might have a million dollars, and it goes from a million dollars to 20. Pop might have $1 in his bank account, and it goes from $1 to 20. $1, okay? I don't know what his financial statement is. All I know is that he found 20 bucks. So I know what his change in financial status is, but I don't know how much money he had to start with. Okay, the same thing is gonna happen here. I don't know what's happening, I just know that change in voltage is gonna be 200. Okay, now, then, on the next one, then we're gonna go from C to B, then, oh, excuse me, then it takes five, negative five microjoules to move the charge from C to B, okay? So here's the story. Now here's C, here's B. Now I've got a negative work that's done. Now what's going to happen to the sign of my voltage? Excuse me, of my change in voltage. <laughs> Negative. I broke Burkamp. You did. <laughs> what happened to Burkamp? Sam broke. <laughs> Thirty years, survived everything, COVID, everything. Yeah, he made it the Sam said the D word one time and it broke Burkamp. It was one time. It wasn't one time. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't one time. That was a cumulative summation of differences. Okay. But again, here's the bigger idea. You know your work. Now your work is going to be a negative value. So, Sam, now we're going to look at it in terms of change in voltages. So now my voltages is going to be a positive or negative value. Negative. Now we're going to have a negative delta V. Or, hey, Pop, what happened? Ah, oh, Burkamp having a bad day. I said, what happened, man? I lost 30 bucks. Okay? Gambling. Rolling <laughs> Bet, he bet, bet Louie a 30 spot who can get here faster, okay? So, here's the story. So, if you do that math, you get a negative 330. Now, does it make sense that that second one is a bigger change in voltage when you look at the values of work? Why, Pop? More work. More work. Bigger change in voltage, right? So, Pop has lost more money than he gained, okay? All right? Is that true? Yeah. So, you got 200, you got 330, it asks for the overall change, the overall change is going to be 530. 530, okay? So, here's what I want you to, here's what hopefully you're beginning to formulate on this whole ooey thing, is that it isn't just, oh, what's my change in voltage? You have to worry about the sign of the change in voltage, and you have to worry about the sign of the charge of the particle that's moving within the voltages. Now, here's a bigger picture. What if your delta V equals zero? What if there is no change in voltage? No work. There's no work, okay? Because that would be like me holding up my remote control, okay? I'm holding it here, okay? I'm exerting a force, but there's no change in voltage. So that's the significance of that work equaling Q delta V. You only do work if you change the voltage, okay? Just like I only do work if I lift something up, okay? Similar type idea. Got that? Good. Brand? Okay. Uh, when you get to number four, four is pretty straightforward. You got 150 to a point where voltage is negative 50. So if you go with the mountain analogy, okay? So here's the mountain analogy. 
So it's going to start off up here at uh, 150 volts. And then it's going to end up way down here at negative 50. Okay? Now, here's the story. You're told that this thing is positive 20 nanocoulombs, right? Okay. Which way are you pushing it? Are you pushing it in the direction that it wants to go? Or are you keeping it from going in the direction that it wants to go? Wait, wait. Keeping. Keeping. keeping it from going, right? Yeah. Okay. You're keeping it from going. So because of the fact that you're keeping it from going, in the direction that it wants to go, what's going to be the sign of your work? Negative value, because you're going to keep it from going in that direction. Now, so if you do this, you get in microjoules, it's, a, it's a, uh, a very, very good GPA, it's like negative four microjoules. So, but here's the deal. On this analogy, what if it had been an electron? So that, that was positive 20 nanocoulombs. What if it had been a negative 20 nanocoulomb charge? Mathematically, would you get the exact same answer for the work? Yes. 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 But. Are you pushing it in the way it wants to go? Yes. There you go. There you go. There you go. Kind of got the idea. Wait, okay. So if you're doing that, if you're pushing it the way it wants to go, then does that just mean you're like holding it like slowly? Yeah, so, so if this had been, if it had been a negative 20 nanocoulombs and you had started it here, okay? Uh -huh. So, and that's a positive charge. So if you push that negative 20 nanocoulomb this way, because you got a positive charge up here, does it want, which direction does it want to go? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so you're, it wants to go up, so you're, you're pushing it down in that opposite direction. Yeah. So that's, and then your sign just changes. So that would be yeah. positive that, or negative word. Yeah. Okay, got it, good, grand? Okay, get that handed in. This is all on video. So, you have a proton. And it's over here beside a negatively charged plate. And then you've got a positively charged plate on the other side. It's a proton. Okay? And the electric field is 1,500 nano newtons per coulomb. Okay? So first off, let's start with this idea. Quick review. What's the direction of the electric field. To the right. Left, left to right, right. Left to right. Or right to left. Left, left, right. left to right. Left to right. Left to right, why? Because it's to the positive charge. Okay. So um, the electric field is going in this direction. Cool. Now, so here's the story. So the first thing you want to figure out is what's the potential energy of the proton. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this proton and we're going to push it over here. So why do we have to push it to the other side? Because, so it has the charge. Charge. because what, does it want to go in that direction? No. No. no, because it's positive charge. It wants to hang over at the negatively charged area. So we have to push it across. Are we going to do work? Yes. yes. So here's what I want you to see and the difference between these two questions. So on A, I'm saying, what is the proton's potential energy? And then I'm going to ask, what's the potential difference? So potential energy is going to be in joules. Potential difference is going to be in volts. Okay? So potential energy, joules, potential difference is going to be in volts. So here's the story. What's A? I'm just saying that's, that's, it's starting at A, and we're just going to push it across. Okay, it's just going to so start at A, and it's going to get pushed across. What's up with the two different arrows? Huh? Why are there two different arrows? Well, okay. one, I was showing the direction of the electric field. Oh, okay, okay. Okay? So, here's the story. 
So when you look at delta U, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can calculate delta U. One is that it's KQ1, Q2 over R. Is that something that we want to use here? No. No. Okay. Mainly because we don't know the charges. And we, this doesn't make any sense to do that. Okay. So let's punt that one. Okay. Now, you can also use Q delta V. Okay. But we, know that we don't know the voltage. But we also know that voltage equals F which is your electric field multiplied by the distance across. So if we know that delta V equals ed and Q equals delta V, we can take ed and substitute that in from the voltage. And then we can go delta U equals QED. Okay? We know the charge. Uh, I'd ask, we'll still ask. Louis, what's the charge on the proton? <laughs> I know, he's not here, but... Okay. Uh, wait. Positive. 1.6 times. Lost the negative. the negative 19. Yeah. We gotta give him a code. I guarantee you he doesn't lost it. Hundred percent. On phonum grave, Louis. On phonum grave. <laughs> oh, what, what's on, the code word? On phonum grave. On phonum grave, Louis. That's the code word. <laughs> on phonum grave. <laughs> Bonus points if you know what it means. <laughs> No, okay. Louis says it for sure. 100%. I'm pretty sure Louis is the one that taught me that. No, we didn't. No, I don't, that, I don't, I don't see that being a Louis thing. I don't think Louis is. No, I don't, no, I don't see that. Uh, Take that as a compliment, Louis. It was definitely Okay, so here's the story. Let's look at the units. Q is going to be in Coulombs. The electric field is going to be in Newtons per Coulomb. Newtons per Coulomb, which is going to be the 1500. And then we have a distance measured in meters. Yeah. meters. So then we have the coulombs times our 1500, right? Yeah. Newtons per coulomb. And then our distance is one and a half centimeters, which is going to be 0 0.015, 0 0.015 meters. Okay? Now, an interesting thing happens. What's going to happen to the coulombs? They're going to cancel out, okay? Coulombs are going to cancel out because that's newtons per coulomb. Then I have newtons times meters, otherwise known as joules. Uh, so that's going to be my ooey, right? So if you do the math on this one, you get, to save you some time, 3.6 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. Now, what would happen if I push those plates further apart? No, 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 no. I push the plates further apart. Right? So that would be almost analogous to me lifting something up higher. Okay? All right. Now, the potential difference between the plates. Now, with this one, here's what you want to look. So you're trying to find voltage at this point. So potential difference is voltage, right? So delta V, you want to find that change in voltage. So what relationship can I find to find my change in voltage? Well, voltage is basically what? What's another way to express voltage? Change in potential energy over Q. Yeah, joules per coulomb, right? Yeah. Okay, so if nothing else, just look what happens with the units. Oh, here's how many joules I've got. 3.6 times 10 to the negative 18th joules, which is how much energy there was, per unit of charge, which is 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Oh, I take my energy divided by my coulombs. I get, in this case, then, uh, 22 and a half Volts. Okay? So the, you got to get the terminology straight. Since, I, since I've got to upload this video, I'll be here. All right. So just email me when you get close. Okay. And I'll, yeah, I'll let you in on the, the, I'll let you in on the doors. It, see the fish tank at the yeah, end? Yeah. I'll let you in the, that one. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So. What's the potential between 
at the midpoint. Well, look at it this way. If it's 22 and a half all the way across, what do you think the potential is going to be at halfway in between? Um, yeah. yeah. 11.25 volts. Okay. Because it's half the difference. Okay. No worries there. Now, here's this is where it gets complicated, just in terms of the math. So if the proton is released, what's going to be the velocity when it hits the plate? So here's the story. So we've pushed this electron, or we've pushed this proton all the way across here, and we're holding it there. So we know how much energy that we've stored, 3.6 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. As soon as I let go of that potential energy, what's going to happen? It's going to turn into kinetic energy. It's going to change into kinetic energy. So if that's the case, so my, that change in UI is going to equal my change in my... KT. And kinetic energy equals one-half... MV squared. MV squared. Now, clearly, the farther I push it, the more energy I store... That would be like me lifting this up. If I only lift this up a little bit, I only store a little bit of energy, I only get a little bit of velocity. The farther I lift it up, the more energy I store, the more velocity it's going to have when it, gets, when it hits. So if you do the math, take 2 times that kinetic energy divided by the mass, and then take the square root of all of that. And if you plug in the numbers, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th, kilograms, that kinetic energy of 3.6 times 10 to the negative 18th, and if you do the math, you get 6.57 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. Now, what would have happened to those calculations if it had been an electron? Uh, negatives, a lot of negatives. A lot of negatives. What would have happened? Would the UI still have been the same? Mathemat numerically, would yeah, the yeah, absolute course. value still yeah. would have been the yeah, same, yeah. right? Yeah. But an interesting thing happens. What would have happened to the velocity? Increase. Why? Because it's being lighter. Less mass for the same energy. Less mass, same energy. It has to be going faster. Okay. Now. Don't flip out on what I'm going to about to write on the board, okay? This isn't a, it's an assignment, but it isn't a real assignment. It's things that you need to look at. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to have this answer key ran off, okay? So you're going to need to know it, but it's not going to be like an assignment assignment because I'm going to give you the answer key to this, okay? So don't flip out and go, oh, my God, I'm going to give you it. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's a lot That's of questions. You just said it. Was, wait, so it's not going in the grade book? Like, we're not getting points for it. Oh, <laughs> why are we doing it then? <laughs> because this is stuff that you're going to have to do test. I just don't want you to have the stress about doing the homework. Okay. What if I do it? Can I get the points? You guys are going to be afraid after this one. Is this just review them? No. This is, but some of this we haven't gone over yet, like capacitance. We'll, we'll go over that tomorrow. Okay. Can we just like look through this? Yeah. So tomorrow, what I'm going to have run off, I'm going to have my answer key ran off for this. Okay. So that way, if you if you read the problem, you go, hey, I know how to do it. Don't worry about it. But if you read the problem, you have no idea how to do it. Now, some of this, in terms of capacitors, we'll talk about tomorrow. Okay. You, I, I've shown you capacitors. That's that deal I did with the demo when I cranked up the handle and we stored that energy and then we let it offload. So, so tomorrow, what will happen is that when you walk in, I will have all of this work out for you, okay? But that will at least give you some idea. So tomorrow we'll review, tie up loose ends. That final is gonna be on 
Thursday. Thursday. If I were you all, I would begin to go back and look at optics. Because that's just in terms of signs. When is it positive? When is it You're, negative? Are you, are you going to make us draw? I will not make you draw like a formal okay. ray optic diagram. Okay. Hold up, hold up. Okay. I will not make you do that. Okay. Okay. Stop that.